Hello and welcome back to Digital Assets Daily. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in your corner of the world. There's a lot of exciting stuff going on. First off, you know, I hope everyone had a great Christmas, and it looks like uh, in the next few days we're going to have a, a wonderful new year. Hopefully you're keeping safe and warm wherever you are located, and hopefully the weather and everything is, is going good. So getting right into the news, there's a lot going on. Uh, let's just get into this. The first article uh, for cryptos on their way to the moon, according to expert forecast. And right off the bat, you got XRP, Matic, Op, and Ethereum. I think Ethereum is going to be pretty easy to see with the ETFs uh, coming out this year. And, you know, a current release that just came out this morning is that um, as early as Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, they're going to start releasing the uh, Bitcoin ETFs. So it seems like in the next week or two, those are going to be released. And I would expect to see, oh my goodness, uh, Bitcoin probably taking a run like it's never seen before. Usually when it does, it will pull the rest of the altcoins in its current as it begins moving. Um <clears throat> So much going on, I don't even really know where to begin with that. Um, it's a little frustrating because there's so much suppression and intentional manipulation on XRP. By now, we should have, you know, seen well over double digits. A lot of people don't understand market cap versus utility, but that's okay. As time unfolds, they'll, they'll start to learn that quickly. Next article, the most outrageous Ripple XRP price predictions recently. XRP was projected to skyrocket above $470 in the future. And check how realistic is the achievement of that level. We don't even need to go into that because, again, they're, again, market cap versus utility kind of changes everything. And there's a lot that people don't think about when they're thinking long term because this has to last between 50 and 100 years. About 50 years is it tends to be the cycle. We're around that now with current um, antiquated system that we're on so you know the the thing of it is uh, the joke uh, or not even necessarily joking but inner ledger how we played the video many times stating um, that it's designed to do all the money as he says in the video and then he says okay maybe not all of it but at least like 90 percent or whatever I believe it was exactly 90 percent was the number he used but Having said that, the, all the money is so much more massive than we can even comprehend. But even the ones that we've shown here on this channel is $4.3 quadrillion dollars of volume annually. And that's, you're, you're, that's not even all the money. So having said that, it's massive. XRP can easily be between three to five digits, not even a problem. And yes, I've been bullish from the beginning, and that's where I've always been. Because when I came in, the only two examples, David Schwartz, you know, who helped design Bitcoin when he was with the NSA. And why do you leave Bitcoin if it's the best to go to Ripple? I think that's more of a statement than a question. But having said that, uh, Ripple CTO Joel Katz or David Schwartz, as he states in his examples, is a $10,000 XRP and a $1 million XRP. And if you understand the white papers of how high Bitcoin can go versus how high XRP can go, I think that alone should even excite you. Again, XRP was designed to be everything that Bitcoin couldn't be. So that, I think, again should answer your question as well but expert says 100k to 200k xrp can make you a millionaire but not 500k and i would add to that in this discussion i would say i feel like that discussion is talking about the next immediate um, bull run could it go there absolutely will they it's hard to say with all the suppression and manipulation and the delays it's it's hard to know what they're really waiting on before they release or flip the switch, as we call it, as Brad calls it, as David Schwartz calls it, and as the banking uh, system calls it. But it is one of those things where 
500 XRP, absolutely. If you hold it, it's going to be massive. I think back to, you know, whenever someone had 500 plus of Bitcoin when it was $8 and they were calling it an S coin back then versus where it hit its all-time high. 500 Bitcoin at $8 versus 500 Bitcoin at 60000 It's kind of the same thing we're doing. It depends on just how long you can hold is really where I would feel that article is kind of going into. On the next article, we have Congressman uh, Tom Emmers, and he's getting into the discussion of a bill to remove uh, SEC Chair Gary Gensler. And this is something I had a discussion yesterday on on the Twitter slash X, whichever one you're comfortable calling it. Some people are going to call it Twitter forever. But getting into the discussion of firing him to me the whole conversation and this is no like uh, insult this is no uh, cut down on the politicians it is what it is that's kind of their job it's kind of like uh, what they do if you're talking about something that's going to come it's never going to come very very surprisingly if it did but having said that something that comes is you talking about something you did there's the two different categories, talking about what you would like to do versus talking about what you have done. And that's kind of how I feel with that conversation. Uh, they have the power. They could easily remove him if that was the thing. But as I said yesterday, you know, kind of playing devil's advocate, he's not really the bad guy. He's just someone they gave the free reign to do anything he wanted without regulating him or giving him the rules and guidelines, which they determine and as Gary Gensler states many, many times, as he's in Congress in the meetings, the public meetings, he states over and over again, I'm doing what you guys told me to do. If they were really serious about this moving forward, they wouldn't be trying to fire Gary Gensler. They would be passing a bill to bring about the regulatory clarity. And we shared again a video yesterday, which already states they already have it, that it's all a big game. And she uses the L word in that. But you can go back to our post yesterday and you can watch that video as well saying it's already here. But I digress from that for just a moment to keep in the discussion of this conversation. So if you go back to uh, this bill they're trying to pass, you know, that's all just kind of like uh, kicking, the can, kicking the can down the road, so to speak. Um. Again, if they were serious, this past regulation, it would force him to do what he should be doing the right way anyway. And then if he resigns and goes on to a public job that pays him quite a bit more money, then the next guy comes in and can do the same thing. So firing him is irrelevant. That was the point of yesterday's discussion. If you're really serious about, you know, Gary Gensler being a bad guy, then pass the law. Set the rules that he has to follow. doesn't matter how good a person is bad a person is corrupt a person is choose your word if they have guidelines to follow they can be held accountable so again firing him is irrelevant past clarity that he and the next guy has to follow that's how you fix it again it's like you can uh how do they say it you can um you know you can keep sweeping the dirt out of the house or you can basically just take your shoes off the door and it doesn't even get in there Next article, Ripple Partner SBI launches a joint venture SBI XDC network APAC with TradeFinex. And this is, again, something very, very massive. Um, so I, I think it's pretty funny uh, to see the people who are now talking about XDC when uh, we first started talking about on this channel and these same people, um, you know, they kind of attack that conversation. So SBI Holdings, a prominent Japanese financial services firm and partner of Ripple, has revealed a partnership with TradeFinex, a company based in the UAE specializing in the XDC network. Together, they've established SBI XDC network APAC, a collaborative initiative with the goal of advancing the utilization of XDC network's blockchain tech across the Asia-Pacific, the APAC region with a specific fo focus on enhancing trade finance and facilitating cross-border payments. And again, XDC 
uh, directly connected to Swift, directly being used by DTCC. Oh man, they're massive. And um, what was the other one? I was having a discussion this morning. I just had a complete blank out. You had uh, Swift, DTCC. Oh, and you had R3. And again, R3 connects back to DTCC and on and on. It's an endless loop, but XDC is massive. And here's the thing. If XRP continues to be suppressed, if they don't suppress XDC, it has a potential to fly right past it. There's a new article today talking about uh, XDC, or I'm sorry, not article, but a, a technical analysis analyst, TA guy, saying that XDC is getting ready to 12x. So if it did, ironically, the humor in that to me would be is it would almost put XDC right at the same price as XRP is currently holding. So that would be pretty interesting. And again, XDC has somewhere around 37 billion versus um, XRP. I think we're down now around 97 billion total. And again, the price is uh, estimated if you're doing the <clears throat> speculative or, or the uh, market cap by its circulating supply. So XDC has a much, much lower supply. And again, everything that it's designed to do in its own little market has its own little lane. I mean, XTC could hit double and triple digits very quickly. It really is in a lane of its own with that whole uh, trade supply. So that's going to be interesting to keep following as well. And as we get into our final discussion for today's video, Invoice Mate performs <clears throat> pardon me, the first private credit transaction on the XDC network blockchain using TradeFinex open source Web3 standards. So in a major milestone, Invoice Mate has wrapped up a successful pilot initiative showcasing the seamless tokenization of an invoice using the XDC blockchain protocol. The project harnessed the power of TradeFinex's open source smart contract standards and in a groundbreaking transaction invoice mate showcased the potential of obtaining liquidity by tokenizing a real world asset RWA acting as the loan originator. Invoice mate secured funds for client H and H International LLC through tokenization of essential documentation including the invoice. So this streamlined process resulted in a cash flow of FXD 100,000 for a 60-day period. FXD is a fully decentralized stablecoin soft pegged to the USD and collateralized with the XDC token using the Fathom protocol and primarily focused on the RWA DeFi use cases. So the success underscores the efficiency and the innovation of blockchain-powered financing in traditional finance and you got to remember too UK passed a law that allowed um, the digital uh, trade documentation on the blockchain using the XTC uh, network as well so it just has huge open doors open windows and limitless uh, potential so again guys we'll we'll see how this goes and we'll continue to follow that and remember this is not financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only. And as always, before we go, I do want to leave you with a final thought. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. Much love, guys, and we will catch you in the next one.